Hello and welcome to this Monday edition of Freight Waves Now. I'm your host, Anthony Smith, and I'm also your lead economist here at Freight Waves. So I'll be stepping in for a shipper econ update. But first, we're going to go to Mike Vincent with a carry update brought to you by Powerfleet. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Mike Vincent. Uh, welcome to the Carrier update brought to you by Power Fleet. Let's get into it. First, we have our outbound tender volume index, and I wanted to show this as we had came out of the holiday week and we normalized after that. Uh, you see that outbound tender volumes have leveled off, and they've leveled off quite high. There is not a significant drop off. We're not projecting any significant drop off. They remain uh, the the uh, stress on the capacity and the demand for capacity remains quite high. And we're talking about 50% higher than the last previous two years, so still quite significant. If we look at the outbound tender rejects, we see that outbound tender rejects have fallen a bit after the holiday and now have leveled off also. Now, quantifying falling a bit, we're at still 25%. One in four loads are being uh, rejected. So the power is definitely still, or the control is definitely still in the uh, hands of the carriers. So don't make, don't make any mistake about that. Quite high at 25% almost, one in four being rejected. <clears throat> Excuse me. As we look at the outbound tender volume map and outbound tender rejects, the colors here are outbound tender volumes, and the rejects are the height of the market. What I want to point out here is that the volumes remain and the rejections remain quite high throughout the country. There are definitely pockets where it's a little bit stronger, but you can see that it is, it is well dispersed across the country. Uh, this is different than when you see a very strong just in the west or just in the port cities, I should say, or the coastal cities. What's interesting is if you look in the Northeast Corridor, really around that uh, um, Route I-80 coming across from uh, Elizabeth, Allentown, Harrisburg, and really the whole way across, and really up into uh, Minneapolis area, quite strong in every single market. This is a really good sign of a very strong market as opposed to just the coastal cities. Moving on, if we look at outbound tender volume index and the O-Tri, you can see here a split where the outbound tender rejects has leveled off and your volumes have dropped a little bit below it. It's going to take a pretty significant drop in the volumes in order to reverse the trend of outbound tender rejects and the upward pressure on rates. On the right hand side you can see in the blue is our uh, flatbed and then you have uh, dry van and reefer as well, reefer at 336. These are the uh, truck stop uh, rate per mile in the United States for truckload. 336 on the reefer, 295 on the uh, flat or on the uh, dry van, sorry, and 266 on the uh, flatbed. So still quite strong pressure, upward pressure. Remember this split right here. It's going to take a significant drop in volumes to reverse this trend. If we move on here and take a, a look at the outbound tender rejects map that I pulled up here, what I want to do is really concentrate in this area right here. You're seeing along this area right here really strong. It's strong throughout the United States, but in particular here when you're looking at this, when you bring up the uh, most volatile outbound or outbound, yeah, outbound volumes or outbound tender rejects, sorry, for that region, you see Erie and Pittsburgh near the top. 50% in Erie, which is quite, quite strong, and you can see it's strong throughout this entire corridor right here. If we move on to the outbound tender volumes, again, you see strong volumes, very high pressure on capacity in this area of the United States. Uh, and if we look a little bit further into the ocean tender index, in this index here, this is why we're looking at there's not going to be a very, uh, or one of the reasons why there's not going to be this dramatic drop off in the tender volumes. As we look at the bookings for ocean shipping, we're looking at ocean shipments on our ocean dashboard as going up year over year. The orange line or yellow line here is last year. The blue line is this year. Now these are shipments or bill of ladings. Uh, these could be one TEU or several TEUs or part of a TEU. But look here on the TEUs as well. The volume of freight is massive and moving up. Uh, I'm Mike Vincent and that'll do it for your carrier update.
The comprehensive logistics offerings from Powerfleet cover in-cab ELD, fleet management, trailer tracking, cargo monitoring, and tracking other assets such as chassis and intermodal containers. Power up your operations with Powerfleet. Hello and welcome to the Shipper Econ Update. I am lead economist here at FreightWaves, Anthony Smith, and today we're gonna to go over some of the latest of what's going on in manufacturing with the first chart going over the ISM PMI. I'm sorry, for the first chart going over the industrial production uh, throughout the United States. And so here in the orange line, we have industrial production on a year over year basis. And we see that there was a little bit of a flattening in the latest month. And so in the latest month, we saw a little bit of a decline. This is still, uh, a positive on a month-to-month -month basis, but down just over 7% to on a year-over-year -year basis. So we can see that there is some downward movement. We're looking at growth on a year-over-year -year basis. And the blue line here, we have flatbed outbound tender rejection, our uh, flatbed capacity index. And so we can see that there has also been somewhat of a leveling there as well after a brief spike last month. And so what we can see is that both are starting to level out. There is a recent tick up in our flatbed outbound tender rejection index, but that is not to say that it's gonna be definitely manufacturing tied altogether. We also have to look at construction, which we'll get into here a little bit shortly. But when we're looking at overall manufacturing, there is some good stuff in the works here. Um, when we're looking at the ISM PMI, the one that I thought was up earlier um, in the green line here, we see that flattening out for the ISM green, uh, PMI. And so the Purchasing Managers Index from the Institute for Supply Management is a diffusion index, which reads anything above 50 is indicative of expansion within manufacturing, while anything below 50 is indicative of contraction within the manufacturing industry. And so what we can see is that the ISM PMI, currently the total index is at a 56.0. Um, so well over that 50 point uh, threshold to show that there is indeed growth and expansion within manufacturing from this monthly survey that it gets put out by the survey respondents within the manufacturing industry. And in the blue line, of course, we have here industrial production. So we can see that there is a very tight or close correlate, closely correlating relationship between the two. Typically when one falls, the ISM PMI, the industrial production is usually Far, not too far behind and contraction as well. So there are some real world implications for this survey data. Um, one of the great things about the PMI is that it's broken down into different components. And so of course we have the Institute of Supply Management new orders uh, component as well. So new orders are good to look at because that's gonna be indicative of what's happening down the line for manufacturing. So with new orders coming up, this I believe is the third or fourth month. I believe it's the fourth month of consistent uh, expansion for new orders. So we can see that there has a reading of 67.6. This is well within that expansion territory for new orders. And so that's telling us that there is indeed a demand for manufactured goods and that there is likely to be more production coming on down the line. Typically, we'll look at this as one of the premier leading indicators within manufacturing with, of course, coinciding with flatbed outbound tender rejection index to see what the capacity is looking like. But as always, we're looking at manufacturing. The main thing, the main driver that's really gonna dictate what's happening without, with anything in, throughout the economy is gonna be the path of COVID-19, of course. So when we're looking at the ISM new orders, we see that there is well above expansion. We're also seeing expansion in the backlog of orders. And so that's telling us that there is indeed a buildup of activity within manufacturing. Um, one of the things that is still in contractionary levels is the um, employment. And so we are still seeing employment is still below that 50 threshold, so showing that there is still contraction within employment. Um, that, of course, is going to be one of the weak points for manufacturing um, as we see what's going to happen with the, the pace of more workers returning to the factories. Next up, we're going to have flatbed outbound tender rejection index here in the blue line. And as we alluded to earlier in the orange line, we have construction spending for residential units. And so we can see residential construction spending is starting to make its way back up in the latest month of data. Um, we are going to jump into more housing and construction data on Wednesday when we're looking at some of what's going on into housing starts. But I want to give you a quick preview of what's happening on the other side of flatbed manufacturing. 
um, which is some upward movement here. That's going to wrap it up for this shipper update. As always, you can check out our content on all your favorite streaming networks like Apple TV. And if you haven't already, check out Redwood Logistics Food Report that just launched last week. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode.